Welcome and thank you for joining me today. We have a number of projects we're going to work on and all are going to be stencil based today. That's the focus. I'm Jackie Bernardi and I hope you're going to paint paper with me. All right, just getting started here, uh, I'm going to use this stencil that I've had for, oh, about a year or two now. I found this from a seller on Etsy and uh, I, I just love this design. There's kind of a retro grooviness to it. Uh, but what I think I'm going to use this for today is to create sort of a sea glass type look. So using this stencil, which is well loved by me, as you can tell, I'm going to use this over this blue background that we created a couple weeks ago in a different video. I love the texture and the depth of this background, and I do want that to come through to a certain degree in the final uh, paper that I'm painting today, but I don't really want it to be so textury in your face. This here is some golden fluid acrylic, and it's interference violet, so it gives that really great that, that look of iridescence where it completely changes the color of what it goes over, but it's 100% transparent and the color varies by how the light hits it and the way that the interference paint reflects it. So I'm just gonna put some on here, um, quite a bit actually. And that was a little bit of a mistake, but I have to tell you, the inter interference colors go a long way. And I've had this little tiny tube for the last 12 years, and it's still good, it still works, and it's still beautiful. So just using a sponge brush here to move it around. As you can see, it's not really, well, it's changing the color a little bit, uh, because the light that I have on in the studio is reflecting straight down on it. Here, let me show you. All right, see that? Now, it looks great, except I don't want the brush strokes in there. You can see the brush strokes that were made by the sponge brush. So, so I'm just gonna grab my badger brush, super soft, and blend out the the brush strokes themselves. So all that's left is the interference paint on top of the existing background. See that? I really like that. Okay, so I am going to put this off to the side to dry uh, before I put any more layers on it because I don't want to smudge the interference around any more than it is. Now the second project, I want to build up this uh, sheet of, or this page of sheet music. And I'm going to use this stencil. The stencil came from Amazon. And you might be surprised, but Amazon has a pretty great variety of stencils. What I like about this stencil is there's so many cuts in it that when you use it, it actually looks like mark making more so than a stencil and you'll see that in a couple minutes. In addition, I am going to use Titan Buff, um, the light phalo blue, and Indian yellow hue. These are uh, soft body acrylics by Golden, and the Titan Buff is the fluid acrylic. And what I wanna do is I just kinda of wanna obliterate some of the musical notes. I want you to know that this work that I'm doing is on a sheet of music. I want to obliterate it a little bit. So I'm going to add these colors. I'm going to roll them out with a brayer and just kind of move the color around the page a little bit as a very first layer for this project. I'm using the jelly plate here as just a palette for myself today. I like using the jelly plate as a palette. Um, I like the way the paint moves around 
and blends when I use it in this way with a brayer, but also at the end of the day, kind of the bonus projects, we'll pull up the layers on from the palette and uh, we'll have a couple of hopefully really great looking uh, background papers to be used for some kind of collage fodder. All right, so I move some of that blue and tighten buff around and now I'm going over with the Indian yellow hue, which is a great color. I think it's a festive color and I, I just love the visual lift it gives pretty much any piece I use it in. It's a little bit like the um, quinacridone Nicolazzo gold that I love so much too, which I'm sure will make an appearance in here sometime today because you know I love that. All right, I think this is just about enough background here. Uh, again, you can still see some musical notes, but it gives us more of a solid to use our stencils over uh, so that we can see the detail in them. But I think for now, I am just going to put this to the side and let it dry before we do any stenciling so that, again, things don't get smudged. Now the Brer, I just love the way the Brer blended this. And that's a favorite technique of mine uh, for a lot of collage fodder is to use the brayer to spread color around. Okay, going back to the first project, uh, the interference violet has dried now. And I think you can see the reflective quality of it. It's made some of the blues purple. It's made the salmon a little bit reddish. And I'm going to attach the stencil with just a regular paper clip. I, well, this is a pretty big paper clip, but you could always use a normal butterfly uh, paper clip like you would with um, office supplies. And the reason I'm doing this is I just want the stencil to stay in place uh, for this next portion. And so that I don't have to focus on holding it down as much as I would if I were just free-forming it. And what I've decided to do here is to blend some colors, but with a compound. And what I'm using is Golden's self-leveling gel. And I've mixed the self-leveling gel with three different colors. So in my hand right now is the Nickel Azo Gold. And I'm just going to squeeze this on. And then this here is the quinacridone violet. And again, it's just the, the pigment mixed in with self-leveling gel. So this will be very transparent once I start moving it around, but it will also retain the quality of the color. And this here is cerulean blue fluid acrylic mixed in with the self-leveling gel. Now what I love about the self-leveling gel is it can go on as thick or as thin as you like, and it will pull into the cutouts here of the stencil. And when it dries, it will dry completely level. You, you won't see the uh, strokes or the marks from the silicone paint scraper, or shaper, excuse me, that I have here. So you can see these colors are sort of blending together and they're going into the holes of the stencil. And as I pull the scraper across, it's just filling in more of the area of the stencil onto the background below. I will tell you that the self-leveling gel is a thicker uh, medium. It's, it's very fluid, but it's thicker, if that makes any sense. And so it doesn't seep under, under the cuts of the stencil. 
And here I'm just rolling out the back side that was on top just to get the residual self-leveling gel onto this piece. Oh, that looks cool. That looks really cool. That's a surprise. One thing when you're using compounds with stencils, make sure that you get this into water or um, start cleaning it off right away. When you leave compounds on stencils, they build up and it makes it so that your stencil will not lay flat on paper. That would be no bueno. So what I'm gonna do right now is take this off and uh, put it in some, a mixture of water and Murphy's oil soap. That's what I like to use to get the compound off. Uh, if this were just regular paint, fluid acrylic, soft bodied acrylics, um, and pretty much any type of normal paint, I wouldn't really wash it off at all, as you can see. It's, I've got black and gold all over this. Um, I don't typically clean my stencils from paint, but I do for compounds. All right, so what I'm going to do here is moving the self-leveling gel back and forth um, can create air bubbles. And I don't really want air bubbles in the finished look because I'm going for sea glass. So I'm just gonna go through and pop them, which is an incredibly satisfying activity. Uh, and you, all you have to do is just gently touch with a pencil or a pin, just gently touch and the air bubbles just, or just pop. And as the self-leveling gel dries, it'll dry smooth. Okay. I'm jumping right in to the next project. And I love this leopard print stencil so much. And this here is drywall tape that I got at the hardware store. And this is a workhouse. Uh, if you ever get a roll of this, it will last you forever and you will use it for everything. It's just a really great substrate to work on and to use in collage or to mix, in, mix into any of your mixed media pieces um, to make washi tape. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm going to do a version of washi tape today. So one thing to know about the drywall tape is it, there's no adhesive on it whatsoever right now. And it's super absorbent. So just know um, when you put paint on it, the first couple layers of paint, they're gonna very quickly dry into the paper. And if you're using transparent colors, uh, they will dry unevenly, which may be a look that you're totally going for, or you may not like it at all. So just make sure you work fast. On this particular piece, I'm just going for a solid color for the background. And this color here is the uh, Nova colors and it's yellow ochre. And I just wanted to get it down quick. You can see the paper's curling a little bit and that's from the moisture. It'll flatten out, don't worry about that. I'm gonna put it to the side to dry. And I'm really excited to show you what I'm thinking with that leopard print stencil. Okay, we're gonna go jump back to the music sheet project. And uh, this stencil here, what I'm thinking right now is that I'm going to use the stencil and I'm going to use Titan Buff Fluid Acrylics from Golden. And I am just going to brush that into the entire surface of the page. I don't ordinarily use the entire surface of a stencil, uh, but this has so much variety in it. I, I like the idea of using it all over and not having anything be too matchy-matchy or repetitive. So just using a sponge brush because it's 
it makes it really easy to get the paint into the holes. Uh, even though there's a lot going on on the stencil, most of the openings are small enough that if I used a brayer, it wouldn't push the paint into the hole. So sponge brush is a great workhorse. I highly recommend them in your studio or workspace. Zoomed in here so you could see it right after I peeled off the template. It's pretty light. It may dry a little darker. I'm not sure if I want it darker or lighter, to be honest. I may just want to keep it as it is because I don't want it to compete with everything. It's just another layer of texture that I was seeking. Okay, move some stuff out of the way. All right, back to the, what I'm just going to refer to as washi tape. Uh, and the paint has fully dried now or dried enough for me to go over it anyway. And uh, I'm thinking that the first layer of stencil that I want to do over this, mm, hmm. yeah, I think the first stenciled layer, I want to go dark. And I don't know why I grabbed this color. It's a kind of an interesting color choice. It is, again, it's a golden soft bodied color and it's neutral gray and it's the number three neutral gray. And I don't really know why I picked neutral gray and I hope this turns out, uh, but it was the first dark that I grabbed. I don't always love to use black, like I, I usually seek alternatives to black. I'm not opposed to using black. Um, it's just so on the nose for so many things. And I think with this leopard print stencil, if I had used black, that would be what's expected, right? And I don't necessarily like to do what's expected. So I'm just spreading this on with the paint shaper. You might guess by now, this is a workhorse from, oh, ooh. Fun, really fun. Oh, and I love kind of the, fe off of the piece of the washi tape, I like kind of where the um, runoff is. That looks pretty cool to me. All right, I'm just going to kind of go over, it may be a little thicker where the stencil is overlapping the original stenciled part, but if it is, that's going to be okay. There's more layers going on to this and I don't know that we'll see it that much. And even if we do see it that much, I don't think I'm going to be upset about that. Yeah, see, it's a little thicker where there was crossover. It's okay. I'm not gonna cry about this. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's painting paper. What is there to get upset about? I do like this neutral gray. I'm surprised, but I think it looks great over this yellow ochre. All right, so I'm going to add um, a little more thickness, so to speak, in the middle to kind of take the emphasis off the two end bars. And again, as it dries, it may look completely different. I, I may really like the way this looks. We'll see. And just like I did with the self-leveling gel, I'm turning this stencil over and I'm going to uh, go over it to transfer what's on the stencil first, just onto some scrap paper. Uh, maybe I'll have use for the scrap paper later. Oh, well, that's very cool. And yes, I will be using this scrap paper for something later. But this just helps remove some of the product off the stencil and makes good use of it. Mm. 
Okay, this was a piece of um, scrap paper that I used from a project a few weeks ago, and I just essentially took what was on the palette at the end of the day, and I rolled it out on this white paper with a brayer and set it to the side, because when it dried, I loved it. And this time, instead of using the stencil, I'm going to use masks from the stencil. These are the cutouts from a stencil, and I'm going to use them on the paper. These are the Matisse uh, masks, and it, this came from joggles.com, and this is Elizabeth St. Hilaire's uh, most recent release, if you're watching this in the summer of 2023. Um, this is her Matisse cutouts, masks, cutouts um, product, and uh, I don't know, there's kind of a symmetry between music and Matisse for me. So I'm going to use this on the musical sheet. But what I've decided to do was to do these cutouts blind. And I will tell you, between the tracing and the cutting, this uh, actually took quite a bit of time. So I'm just speeding up the video here so it is not so agonizing <laughs> to watch. Um, however, if you were in the studio with me, if you were just hanging out with me for the day, we would have had a wonderful chat while this was going on. So just know there's that. This shape here, I'm not exactly sure what it is alluding to, but I really like the randomness of it. And I especially love that I'm going to be cutting this blind. I'm going to be following the tracings, obviously, but I have absolutely no idea what colors are where under these masks. And so when, after they're cut and I flip them over, it's going to be as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. This is my collage box. I love this box. Somebody gave my husband a really fancy bourbon um, last year during the holidays, <clears throat> and it came in this box, and I was like, oh my god, this box is perfect for all my collage materials. So it's a way for me to keep my collage stuff organized, and I'm not referring to papers, I'm <laughs> referring to the shears and the X-Acto knives and so on. So again, keeping this um, sped up so that I don't lose you here, but I'm just cutting out the pieces. This is a rough cut to start with. Oops, I cheated. I looked a little bit, but I put it down. Um, I did a rough cut to start. Ooh, look at these shapes. Those shapes alone could be something really cool later. And now I'm just doing the fine cut around uh, these shapes. <gasps> Love that. Oh, I really love that. Oh, little bird. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, this is happiness. Look at these colors. I love this. I hope this works on the stenciled music piece. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Um, this is all dry now. The stenciled layer that I did in the Titan buff uh, is dry, and now I'm going to put these shapes on, just kind of get an idea of where I might like to position them. Just move things around a little bit, see what makes sense to me color-wise and balance, and that's it. That's perfect. Okay, that's, I love that. These painted shapes are on a piece of deli paper, and it's wax deli paper. So the back side of the color is a wax surface, which presents a couple of challenges when uh, using it for collage. You wouldn't want to use matte medium uh, to adhere this. It's too liquidy. It will cause the waxed side of the paper to buckle, which will cause the whole thing to buckle. So you're going to want to use a thicker adhesive, and that thicker adhesive might be glue. You could use um, Uhu or Yes Paste, um, or you could use what I'm using, which is the high gloss solid from Golden. 
It's a very thick, a very robust gel medium, and uh, it dries completely clear with a little bit of a gloss, and I may decide uh, later on if, it's, if the page is glossy and I don't like it, I will simply go over the whole page with some matte medium to take the shine off. But for now, the thickness of this compound is going to help me place the colored shapes and to have them dry with a tight seal against the page, so long as I use either a catalyst wedge or a credit card to really adhere and pull out any air bubbles in any buckling of the waxed side of the paper. Does that make sense? If this were regular paper, I would just probably use matte medium because that's my favorite thing to use to adhere collage pieces. But again, because the special needs of this particular paper, I am using the high solid gloss gel from Golden. Here I'm just getting the backside covered with the gel. And then I'm going to put some gel on the page itself where this shape is going to go. It's that wet on wet and that'll make uh, getting all the air bubbles and wrinkles, uh, getting those out very easy to do. So I'm just putting it on. I'm not putting it on very thick. I'm just getting it on there. And there we go. Okay, I'm just going to gently tap it down all over and see if there are any areas that I need to be careful with when adding the pressure. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here with the focus on this camera. And it only lasted a minute. Okay. We are back to the washi tape piece. Uh, I love how this neutral gray dried. I think this looks fantastic. Uh, this would be perfectly fine just leaving it like this, but you know me, I'm not going to leave it like this. Of course, I'm going to do something to it. And it's going to involve a metallic paint. Now, I really don't know what's going on with me in this season of my creative life. Uh, I don't ordinarily use metallics in my work, but for the past couple of months, I've been metallic crazy. So I am going to use some of this uh, Nova Color Gold, just plain gold, and I am going to use the same stencil and I'm going to go over the leopard skin uh, stenciled that was already on there. I'm going over it again. I'm not trying to match up the stencil, the original stencil to this new gold going over it. I know it looks a mess right now. I don't think it will be. I think it's all gonna be okay. But I wanted to throw the gold in there to give visual textural lift, right? That's what the metallic, that's the function of the metallic as I'm using it right now. Again, just like all the other times with the stencils to clean it off a little before I put it away, I'm just gonna roll it out. and then just put it to the side to dry. Oh, <laughs> whatever that is going to end up being, that's going to be pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna move the whole thing here. In fact, I'm gonna take it outside to dry so it dries a little faster. All right, back to sea glass. All right, I'm thinking 
to really get the benefit of the saturated colors below and the in interference color and the gorgeous um, blending of the self-leveling gel, I think what I wanna do is create a dark background, like fill in all of the crevices with something dark. I'm not exactly sure how I wanna do that. There are a lot of cutouts on this page, or not cutouts, but from the stencil, there's a lot of line work to fill in if I'm going to do a dark background. And here I'm thinking about using the Carbon Black Nova Color. And then I thought, no, maybe using an ink would be easier or faster. Uh, I tried out the ink. I'm trying out the ink right now. And uh, this ink is a blue ink. It's a very blue ink, which you'll see in just a second. And for some reason, I thought it was going to read darker than it did. And I, I don't like this. I don't like this color uh, with what I'm doing here and uh, with the effect that I think I want. So I, I'm, I'm not going to use the ink. Just, I, I don't love it. So that puts me back in the, what am I going to use? got thinking, you know, the, the carbon black wouldn't be so bad if I mixed it with something. And so I just decided to use the gold that I just used uh, during the leopard print. And I'm mixing it with some of the carbon black. And it's going to create, um, you know, a shade of black that's kind of metallic-y ish. I mean, as it reads on the screen here, I think it reads really black. Um, so I added some more and I got to a happy place with it, sort of. I got to a happy place with it. By the way, blending like this is a favorite activity of mine. I really do enjoy the feeling of blending paint. Um, and I'm certain that there's a video in the future of us doing uh, some color blending uh, because that's a lot of fun, especially when painting papers. So my bright idea here was that I was going to use just this uh, round brush to go through and paint in background around each one of these stencil cutouts um, that have the quote unquote uh, sea glass look inside of them. And I don't know why I thought this was a good idea for me. I do not like detail work. I don't really enjoy detail work. And here I was looking at this piece of paper. I think it's a nine by 12-ish size paper. And it's nothing but stencil cutouts. And I started this, and as you can see, I've completely sped up the film here because just even this that you're seeing right here took so long for me. And I hated it. And at first I thought, oh, this is going to be a great lesson for me in patience with my art. And I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to go with it and I'll be happy with the results. And I truly hated it. So one of the things I try to do is challenge myself by doing the things that I think I don't necessarily enjoy. And Part of the reason for doing that, and I think everybody should try that sometimes, is that you can learn to love things 
and you can discover things that you love that you wouldn't imagine. But this wasn't it for me. So as you can see here, I've gone in, I've sprayed the whole thing with some distilled water, and I'm trying to be a little careful to go around the sea glass, and then I say the heck with it, and I let my natural creative being go, and I just cover it all with the dark. Uh, I, as I've shared with you all before, I love to go big, I love to use big tools, I like to use big movements, and the uh, tedious, or not tedious, the detail work is too tedious for me. I celebrate anybody who can do detail work and loves it, but I, it's just not for me. So that didn't exactly work the way I wanted, so I thought I'd try this. I grabbed the catalyst wedge and just started pulling this black gold paint across the surface, and it was doing exactly what I wanted it to do. It was filling in the crevices. Uh, it was making the texture from the self-leveling gel uh, jump out more. Uh, it's a little more coverage right now than I want, but I can fix that. And you're going to see me fix that, I think. Oh, yeah. This is definitely more my happy place than trying to outline each piece of glass. So the first pass of erasing some of this darkness off the top is just to use the catalyst wedge and pull it off. And then after that, I'm just using a shop towel and some distilled water and just rubbing over the surface and seeing what comes up. And I'm really liking what's coming up. For the parts that are a little bit drier, I used uh, some isopropyl alcohol on the towel as opposed to the water. It just pulls up a little more of the paint. And this is kind of funky. I like this. And depending on how the light's hitting it, oh, look at that. It looks almost like fabric to me. I like the... Um, the texture on this is amazing. I love this. I wish I could see the colors a little bit more uh, in the sea glass, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking right now. I, I don't think I'm going to mess with it too much more. We're bringing back the leopard print, or it's cheetah. I don't know what kind of animal print this is. It's a some kind of animal print. I'm thinking about what I want to do here, and do I want to put another layer with a stencil on, or do I? Oh, I told you that the quinacridone nickel as a gold would re, would make an appearance here, and. There it is. Oh, God, I love what this does. This looks like copper to me. I mean, yes, clearly it's an animal print, but uh, with the nickel as a gold going over it, it's giving this really luscious. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yes. Look at that. Oh, this is getting really rich. Um, it's, it's a little orangey, I'm going to admit, so I think I'm going to have to work on that a little bit, but I truly love the direction it's going in and the, the, ver the variety of texture, and that's really being created frankly, between the stencil and the metallic paint. It's creating uh, a lift that 
gives the optical illusion of texture when there isn't really texture here. Okay, in the interest of experimenting, I am going over with another layer of this black gold. I think it's because I want more texture look, and I think going over it with the dark is going to help bring out even more of that gold and orange and that coppery look. But this is a mess. I don't, mm. Mm. I don't know what to think about that, to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm going to wipe it. And not wipe it off, but pull up some of the paint that's underneath. Now, on this stencil, I need to be careful. Uh, there's so many holes in this. It's not really a delicate stencil, except when you're rubbing on it, it can be. And it can pull up the edges, which I don't want. Now, I don't like this. I don't think I've ruined it, but I don't like it. So I'm hitting it with some water and then just kind of moving the dark paint around by tapping it. Okay. Well, that's getting interesting. And the badger to blend it out a little. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. This is making me happy. All right. So I think this is what I'm going to do throughout the whole piece. I'm going to add dark, remove dark, hit it with some water, and then move it around and see what I get. If you have any questions about what I'm doing here or what I'm thinking, please ask in the chat. Uh, that's why I do these lives. I want to you know, talk with you and about the process or answer any questions you might have or take suggestions. I'd love that if, as I'm working through this, if you have a suggestion, just go ahead and put it. If you're watching the replay and the chat isn't available, that's fine. Go ahead and go into the comments and leave a comment for me or ask questions in the comments. I answer all my comments, so uh, there's always that. Yeah, see, it looks a mess, but like at the top part of it, it's going to get better. I have faith in it's going to get better. Mm. It's, it's resembling pitted copper to me. It's kind of interesting. You know what it looks like to me? It looks like burled wood. Oh my gosh, like something you'd see on a cigar humidor or... Oh my gosh. Oh, I like this. Okay, I'm just using this on a small strip of uh, drywall tape. <laughs> this could be done on a headboard. This could be um, this could be the backdrop for an entire painting. I mean, the technique transfers to anything. It doesn't have to be relegated to just a small strip of paper. And that's what I love about exploring with painting papers is you learn things and you discover things and you get ideas for things. Oh my gosh, I love this. Oh, and look at that paper. Okay, so let's take a look at where we're at. All right, here's the Matisse musical piece. And I am very happy with the way this came out. I will say the stencil, the Titan Buff stenciling, um, if I had to do it over, I would either do it lighter, like closer to white, pure white, or go darker because you don't really see the texture as much as I was thinking I'd want. So that's something I think I would do a little bit differently if I were to do that again. I don't hate it. It's just that layer of stencil didn't really work for me as much as I wanted it to. But the piece as a whole, I love this. This is, I love this. 
How much fun, cutting out, pasting. I mean, it was like I was in second grade again. So much fun. Oh my gosh. All right, next up is the, the sea glass-ish kind of fabric thing. Um, I just bumped up the contrast here a little bit so you could really see what was going on in there. Um, I'm super happy with this. It would be fun. It would be really fun to do this kind of look on maybe some wet strength tissue paper <clears throat> and so that it could be collaged onto over the top of something and have the uh, actual tissue paper part of it disappear into the other surface. I would love that. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use this for, but for all the agonizing I did over filling in with the dark, I'm super happy with the way it came out. And then there is the burled wood slash washi tape piece of paper. Um, that was all the leopard print stencil, many layers of it, different colors, a metallic, water, a badger brush. I mean, it. every element of creating this had a lasting impact. I mean, from the yellow ochre base to all the way to the very top. And I really do like this. This would be great if you were making your own gift wrap. Um, if you wanted to wrap a present without using lots of paper, you could use this as, um, you know, just sort of like a ribbon. If you're going to use this as washi tape, you could use a spray adhesive on the back, you could use double-sided tape on the back, or you could simply glue the paper right down onto whatever surface you wanted. So here, I just grabbed a box. This could be a gift box for somebody. And just putting this paper over it is enough of a detail with maybe a card uh, to have it be beautiful gift wrap without using a lot of paper. I don't know. So one of the other great things about the uh, drywall tape is it has a seam down the middle so you can fold it in half very easily and you can make your washi thinner or thicker. It doesn't have to be used for washi tape. You could use this for literally anything. All right, and uh, before we run off, we have the bonus paper painting, which is uh, pulling off all the paper from the palette, um, excuse me, pulling off all the paint from the palette, and the palette being my jelly plate. And so all I'm doing is rolling it out here. It's pretty thick, so I'm not going to get this in one pull, and that's okay. So I'm gonna grab a sheet of regular copy paper and I'm going to put it on, I'm not going to leave it on too long because there's so much paint on there. Uh, it, I risk the paper tearing uh, because the getting so moist from all the paint. So I'm just gonna rub it on and then uh, pull it pretty quickly. And like I said, may have to do a couple of pulls to get what I'm going for. I don't know what I'm going for. You never know with the jelly plate, but oh my gosh. <laughs> I love this. Oh my God. I love that. All right. I'm going to put it to the side and I'm going to do a second pull, but this time I'm going to use uh, a little bit of the Liquitex Basics uh, Titanium White. Um, not very much of it, just move it around over the top. That's going to help the layers below pull. Um, and I don't, there's still so much paint down below that's dried that I don't even think this is going to pull all of it off, but it should be interesting. So again, just get it on there. I'm not going to leave it on very long. 
pulled out the Baron. That's just force of habit. I didn't really need to use the Baron. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's lovely. That is so cool. You could see doing line drawings on that. Um, oh, yeah. That could be a series, start of a series anyway. And that's it. Those are today's projects with stencils on Paint With Me. I am so happy you were here with me. If you're watching the replay and have questions, just throw them in the comments.